I'm Simon Fraser uh, from Hopkins Architects and uh, the Managing Director of Hopkins Architects in Dubai. And um, we've been here, so we say, eight, nine, eight or nine years now. And um, we've been, uh, we came here originally uh, to do a competition for Gate Village, which um, we won uh, when we first arrived. And then we uh, um, quickly built that project within about two and a half years and then we moved on and picked up other work but uh, Gate Village has been a, a real success I think so um, that's been um, an enjoyable part of our early years. We have just finished the Sharjah Expo Centre which um, has been built and commissioned and built in six months which is a 14,000 square metre building and uh, that's been enjoyable as well. That's been an enjoyable process. We're just closing that out. So um, that's an introduction to who we are, really. When I first arrived, uh, we, I stayed in the Emirates Towers Hotel for the first night. And I opened my window and I looked out and um, there was this expanse of sand in front of us and little did I realise that that was going to be where our first projects um, were going to be built. For example, around the gate, the gate village, uh, Central Park, 08 Towers, and a number of other things like the Trade Centre site as well. But it has changed considerably Dubai since we arrived. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really grown as a, matured as a city. And I think there's a, a lot of good buildings have been built. And um, yeah, it's been it's a it's a much better place to live actually. It's a it's a bigger city. It's got more things going on, and um, uh, it's a, we've got a, a much more diverse urban environment as well. And I think Dubai is quite wrongly perceived, particularly in the West, as this. Uh, you know, the use of the word Dubai is quite a negative term for a lot of people. But I think the city, uh, during the boom times, did have some problems with it. There were some strange projects being proposed and things like this. But, and OK, there are some issues with the palm, and uh, some parts of the palm have some pretty dreary street environment, urban environments along there. But overall, I think Dubai is a really good example uh, to many other cities in the Middle East actually about how um, a fairly benign uh, governance in society can create uh, a, a very dynamic and international city. And I don't think it's any different really from uh, Shenzhen or Shanghai to some extent or any other growing city, you know, parts of the problems of Beijing. Um, any emerging cities around the world have similar issues to do with Dubai. And Dubai, I think, stands, stands pretty well in that, uh, in that context. It's, uh, it's very, very good, I think, in that sense. So I think the, the boom times of Dubai created some pretty difficult uh, um, professional environments for us as architects, but uh, it, it pushed things forward. And I think that can only be a good thing for a place like Dubai. It's put itself on the map. It's created a sense of gravity. Uh, center of gravity in particular with um, leisure uh, hotels and the financial center. I mean environmentally, your point about the environmental issues in Dubai, um, yes I mean there was, I remember an article a while back saying you know it was actually mad to place a city to create a city in Dubai with its heat and um, its other issues of being built in the so-called desert. But uh, let's face it, there's a lot of other cities around the world which have to deal with the extremes of either cold or, or heat. And Dubai for five months of the year, should we say, has got a fairly benign climate. Um, it, okay, it has to deal with three or four months of extreme heat, but uh, so does the UK or other countries in, in the Northern Hemisphere have to do with coal. And um, Dubai, I think, has the introduction of the Estadama regulations. Um, a lot of the projects in Dubai are actually required to be built to a LEED standard, or, or at least clients demand it now. 
things are changing. There are, it does have a big carbon footprint, but um, I think there are things are changing. And I think uh, water usage is being reconsidered. Um, solar energy on buildings is being considered, solar shading, so there's passive and active solutions in, in building design. I think Dubai is uh, again uh, going to come out looking better than many other cities in the world. How did this recession affect our company? Well, for a start, um, we had 125 people at the peak of the boom in our office here in Dubai. And we, tra you know, with all the projects that were stopped, we, we really, in the end, cut down half of that quite quickly. It was a really difficult and sad time to do that with everyone. And then we gradually cut down even further. We went down to about eight or nine people in, in, the, in its lowest point. Uh, very, very difficult, to be honest, from an emotional and human perspective. It's a terrible thing to go through to, to reduce numbers in that sense, reduce your office in that sense. So we had difficulties. We had problems with clients not paying us, which we had to take them to court, or at least one particular client we had to um, take to the DIFC courts in Dubai and go through the court process to retrieve our money. So it was, it was difficult. But I think the good thing is if you've been through the recession, you can actually, um, and you've stuck with Dubai, which we have, we've stuck with and we've kept with our clients. Um, people remember that. And so we didn't leave, we didn't uh, head off. And, and actually in all the years, we've only made one loss. Every year we've, we've, we've made a profit while we've been here. And we've continued to build buildings as well, which is what it's all about at the end of the day. So we've, I think the booms, the, the boom time was in some ways very, very difficult when it really hit its peak. But by the time um, we got out of the recession and we're now slowly working our way out of the recession right now, I think things are stabilizing and becoming much more normal. So it's, it's, a, it's, a better, it's a better period now than it was. I think if Dubai wins the 2020 Expo, well, that will really be a fantastic thing for the city. I think it will really establish, um, really uh, reinforce the city as a proper world uh, international place to do business and to trade and things like this. And it will bring in other sporting and exhibition events to the city as well. So if, if Dubai gets the 2020, which I'm, I'm very confident it will, it must, it, it's, 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 it must be up there as being one of the favourites. If it gets that, I think it will be a fantastic thing for the city. So I think the future is looking very good for Dubai with the, um, the, the way Emirates airline is, is expanding and is, is a huge major transport hub. Um, we've had a lot of interest about various clients looking into interesting new ways of uh, dealing with the hub hub issue for the airport uh, and passengers coming through Dubai. Um, I think uh, Dubai could become another Hong Kong, really. It could become the Hong Kong of the Middle East, or Singapore, hopefully, or the Middle East, if it's not already. But it could really strengthen that position. So I, I've got po very positive feelings about the, the city.